Reaching the Olympics is one of the greatest dreams of any athlete, but the pandemic put those dreams on hold for over a year for our top athletes. Now the wait is nearly over. McFarlane Moletti sat down for a one-on-one -on -one with Barry Hendricks, newly elected president of the South African Sports Confederation and Olympic Committee, to find out how Saskock is dealing with a legacy of corruption, financial mismanagement and allegations of sexual abuse. We also preview the medal hopefuls who are now counting the days before they fly out to Japan. Tokyo, the largest mega city in the world and host of the biggest sporting event on earth, the Olympic Games. Postponed because of the global pandemic, Tokyo 2020 will kick off in July and South Africa will be there. If you can represent South Africa at the highest peak of any sportsman at the Olympic Games, yeah, it's a huge honor. And it's not just your country, it's also your continent that, you, that we're representing, it's Africa in a whole. So uh, we've got a lot of responsibility on our shoulder, but at the same time, it's, yeah, it's the biggest accolade in our sporting code. And uh, yeah, it's a huge honor to play for the country as well. These young hockey players echo the hopes and aspirations of every South African who's ever competed at the Olympic Games. And with every medal won, the country celebrated their triumph and a star was born. At Rio 2016, we achieved a record 10 medals. But while the athletes became legends, Saskok was mired in controversy. There's been a lot of financial mismanagement. The CEO and the CFO got fired for what appeared to be very serious charges, although they're contesting that at the CCMA. I think one of the biggest things that hurt Saskok was the infighting within the board that basically paralyzed them. Veteran sports journalist David Isaacson reported on Saskok's woes for the Sunday Times, from the dismissal of former CEO Tabby Reddy to the 2018 findings and recommendations of the inquiry led by the late judge Ralph Zulman. It was just like a, a hot mess that really has only been hopefully sorted out at last year's elections. Saskok has often been in the news for all the wrong reasons, but now they've got a new board and a new president. So what can we expect from this new team? The membership of Saskok have spoken. We as a board and we as the members of Saskok have voted this new board in, and we are looking forward and we're moving forward. Newly elected president Barry Hendricks represented Eastern Province in squash, tennis, judo and athletics. I became an administrator of sport when I was about 17, 18, when I was asked to become the secretary of the tennis club in the coloured suburb of Port Elizabeth called in Galvindale. When I was at Rhodes University with the Black Student Movement, I was the chairman of the tennis club. I then became an executive member of the Eastern Province Sports Council, then moved up as the president of Squash South Africa, and then, of course, chairperson of Gauteng Sports Confederation and now this. And because of that, I have this affiliation with the needs of athletes, but also the needs of, of administrators, and I was also a professional tennis coach. So as Saskok, you've got a deficit of about 7 million rand. How do you plan to rectify that? We've already covered it. We don't owe any debt any longer. We are now working towards bringing in money for the Olympics, Paralympics, Africa Games. So we are now able to pay anyone that we owe. Um, um, and now we're working on um, building our coffers through the IOC funding, through government funding, lottery funding. How many athletes are you going to be taking to the Olympics and the Paralympics in Tokyo? We are taking about 200 um, athletes for the Olympics and we are taking about 40 athletes for the Paralympics. That's the biggest team we've ever had, because in 2019, they voted to relax the selection criteria and simply apply the IOC and IPC's qualifying criteria. Will you be taking all of them through? That's the um, current policy, yes. If you qualify, you go. In the past, just because you qualified for the Olympics, it didn't mean you would actually go. Some athletes would have to raise their own money to fund their participation. Could this be another hurdle that athletes have to go through this year? We're not 100% sure yet about what our final Olympic costs are going to be, but all of our preparation, we have to cover those costs. And at the moment, if we're not careful, that comes out of the players' pockets. 
Gareth Ewing is the coach of the South African men's hockey team. They have a crowdfunding initiative to cover their travel costs to competitions here and in Europe in preparation for Tokyo. How much does each athlete need though, Gareth? We've been told to budget about 45k a person. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, our operating costs between now and getting to Tokyo or getting back again from Tokyo, we're looking at about three and a half million. And has, has Saskok offered any help, any financial assistance for you guys to go? I know there's stuff going on behind the scenes and, and I know that help is going to be offered, but we're just trying to control what we can control and that's our preparation, which those costs are not going to be covered. But Hendricks is confident that Saskok will be able to get the funds necessary to pay for every athlete to go to the Olympics. How much is Saskok spending per athlete? On average, 35,000 per athlete, mm -hmm. and, and that's standard. So what costs are covered by the Saskok and which ones are covered by the IOC? Well, the IOC gives us funding for all the accommodation and the costs and food mm -hmm. at the Games, as well as the IPC. We have to cover flights, we have to cover the kits, we have to cover the medical expenses. But Mr. Price Sport has come to the party to sponsor the kit. And Mr. Price and its own design team are creating a uniquely South African brand that will compete at the Olympics. South Africans were mortified when our athletes turned out in the most embarrassing design disasters in London and Rio. We're not going to have the debacle that we had in Rio, no. So don't be like the pyjamas of 2012 and 2016, right? We're not going to have... Are you, are you promising me? Yes. No, Mr. Price... <laughs> it's winter, we could buy them for winter. <laughs> no, no, no. Mr. I have full confidence in Mr. Price. You've seen Planet Fitness come on board and there are a few in the pipeline still. Team SA may be getting free fellies for Tokyo, but Saskok still needs an airline sponsor and funding for the medical team. Additional money is expected from government and the lotto. But there's another thorny issue which needs to be resolved before the Olympics. Sexual abuse has been a stain on South African sports for decades. Last year, three swimming coaches were accused of abusing minors and the sports administrators came under fire for their handling of the allegations. So what is SASCOG doing to protect our athletes? The Swimming South Africa is at the coalface of those allegations. I think it's fair to say that at least in two of those three cases, the issues have not been handled properly. Speaking across the board for all federations, we need to make sure we have really strong policies in place and the procedures, but more importantly, that we then follow up and follow through with that. And I think a, a huge shift has to come in the mindset of sports administrators to ensure that the victim is the one that we look after. Swimming icon Penny Haynes won the double gold medal in Atlanta in the 100 and 200 meter breaststroke in 1996, an achievement that's never been equaled. She's now involved in Sports Voice, offering a free safeguarding policy for sports clubs and federations worldwide. We need education. If you look at the USA system, it's mandatory for their coaches, for anybody on the national team to annually do this program and answer questions and go through it and get accredited on safeguarding. But we've adopted a safeguarding policy and we've entrenched the fact that each federation, national federation, must have a safeguarding policy. Saskok will also be taking action regarding Swimming SA ahead of the Tokyo Games. There are new matters that have arisen and the current and Safeguarding Commission have now forwarded even further recommendations to Saskok as to how the board must deal with that particular matter and we'll do it through the proper processes as well. South African athletes have been starved of international competition since the start of lockdown. But with the Olympic Games kicking off in July, training is in full swing. So how many medals can we expect? Tatiana Schoenmaker is a definite, possibly for two medals. The breaststroke champion broke two African records last week. Tatiana, if she continues dropping her times at the same kind of pace that she's been doing up until now, then I think we can expect really big things from her. I think Akani Sambina in the 100, he's got a great chance. And I think the men's 4 by 100 relay, he's got a great chance. Wade van Nikek, if he's back, that's, a, that's another medal. I can't believe it, he has obliterated Michael Johnson's world record. Surfing makes its Olympic debut in Tokyo and South Africa's Geordie Smith is world number four. We want medals, we want gold, and there are prospects for gold. I'm not going to say who at, at this stage. But we also go to the Olympics to provide a platform and a stepping stone 
for those youngsters who might not um, get medals this year, but may get medals in Paris or the following year. But with only three months to go until the opening ceremony, more than 70% of Japanese polled want the games delayed or cancelled. A resurgence of COVID infections means no foreign spectators will be allowed. The IOC have also put on the table free vaccinations for every athlete in every country. The athletes have our utmost attention. They come first during these games and the support teams and the medical teams and the management teams are there to support them to create a hassle-free environment for them to compete at their very best. So good luck to the athletes. All the best. Thank you for watching our stories here online and please subscribe below to become part of our YouTube community and be notified when we upload our latest content.